Welcome to Sacred Hearts Parish. As Catholics, we truly believe that Jesus is present, body and blood, every time we gather for Mass. It is Jesus' most wonderful gift to us. Today we celebrate the 20th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our presider is Father John, and our Mass intention is for Sacred Hearts Parish and all those affected by the coronavirus. God offers salvation to all who have faith in him and follow his ways. The Lord welcomes to the kingdom all who believe in him and follow him. God's mercy and love is extended to all. Let us strive not to focus on each other's differences, but to view others through the eyes of Jesus and seek to celebrate that we are all children of God by reaching out to one another with love and kindness. Let us now bring our prayers to our loving God. Greetings, everyone. Good to see you all this uh, day. Let's begin our prayer together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. We gather this day once again to praise God in our journey of life. We pause from our active schedule of life to seek God's blessing, uh, seek God's forgiveness, mercy, as we call to mind our sins, and welcome God's peace this day. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let's now raise our voices in prayer as we praise our God. Let us pray. O oh God, who prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, 
Observe what is right. Do what is just. For my salvation is about to come, my justice about to be revealed. The foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, ministering to him, loving the name of the Lord, and becoming his servants. All who keep the Sabbath free from profanation and hold to my covenant, them I will bring to my holy mountain and make joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be acceptable on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The word of the Lord. letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I am speaking to you Gentiles. Inasmuch as I am the apostle to the Gentiles, I glory in my ministry in order to make my race jealous, and thus save some of them. For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but from life from the dead? For the gifts and the call of God are irrevocable. Just as you once disobeyed God, but now have received mercy because of their disobedience. So now they have disobeyed in order that, by virtue of the mercy shown to you, they too may receive mercy. For God delivered all to disobedience, that he might have mercy upon us all. The word of the Lord. My friends, the Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Lord. At that time, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not say a word in answer to her. Jesus' disciples came and asked him, Send her away, for she keeps calling out after us. He sent reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and did Jesus' homage, saying, Lord, help me. He said in reply, 
it is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She said, please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. Then Jesus said to her in reply, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And the woman's daughter was healed from that hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Well, hello, everyone. Good to see you all this weekend as we gather to pray on this 20th Sunday of Ordinary Time. I hope you're enjoying these summer days, a uh, few hot days this past week, a few muggy days, but hopefully we have a nice, cool weekend upon us. As we reflect upon this gospel, I first of all want you to think about something. In your life's journey, past or present, we all go through periods where we have some keen interest about something. Uh, some aspect of our life is very, very important to us. And it entails taking greater efforts on our part to achieve that goal, what is important for us. For example, if you have a new job, you're asked to really uh, learn about all the job uh, requirements, uh, the policies, the procedures, possibly go away uh, for a few days for workshops and training. You give your best effort because you want to um, have that job provide for yourself and your family. Let's say you like to uh, play a certain sport or a certain hobby you have. Well, you put a lot of time and effort into uh, that hobby or that uh, activity, that sport. Uh, I, I watch our youngsters uh, they're playing a few sports this summer, and they're you know, uh, improving their skills in soccer or uh, football, possibly. But they're enjoying the outdoors a bit, and they're working hard to improve. So anything we want to do in life, our, ma our marriages, uh, our other goals of life, we invest a lot of time and effort in those aspects of our life that we deem important. Well, I, I tell that story because I think in today's gospel, we hear of the Canaanite woman. Her daughter is suffering. As any mother would, she wants her daughter to be well. She wants her daughter to be healed. And so she approaches Jesus in that respect. And a Canaanite woman, first of all, being a woman, uh, a Canaanite, uh, a pagan you no know, aspect of her life uh, in that culture to approach somebody in public you know uh, 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 is very shocking but she has in her mind as any mother would I want my daughter healed I want my daughter well again so she's willing to cross all those boundaries of that time period tune out all the disciples that say to the Lord send her away get her away but Jesus, his love, his care, his inner spirit you know, comes forth to embrace this woman in love and care. And upon doing that, this woman's life changes forever, I'm sure. She falls in the same category as Zacchaeus. Come down, Zacchaeus, from the, the, the uh, tree. I want to spend time with you. His life changed. Jairus, who's also approached Jesus for healing his child, his life would change. Widows, prostitutes, those who are poor, the lepers, because they had that great desire to be healed and they saw in Jesus that opportunity for healing, they had that boldness of spirit, they approached Jesus and great things happened. So, in a sense, for all of us, my friends, it's all about persistent faith. When each one of us has difficult times, we all do have them. Job loss, family strife, marriage issues, health concerns, 
concerns about our country, the world, the pandemic issues. We're invited to turn to God for healing, peace, new life, and God's love. This woman, though, even though she's a, a pagan, she has the uh, beginning elements of faith. She calls Jesus Lord, Son of David, so she acknowledges who Jesus is. And again, she crosses those boundaries for the potential of healing. She also is a woman of great hope. And I'd like to think about that this day also, hope. Uh, hope is placing our trust in what God can do for us. And sort of hope elevates our thoughts and our minds, our spirits, into God's world. And we rise above this world that sometimes can be pretty hopeless and confusing and challenging if we allow it to be. But this woman being persistent in her faith, she was full of hope that God could do great things for her. You and I, my friends, must also believe that Jesus can do great things for us and through us and with us as we have that consistent hope in God's power, God's love in our lives. So is this Canaanite woman's hope that allows her to do what she did, the unexpected, to approach Jesus, to talk to him, to request healing, and then to let Jesus act in her life. And so again, hope allows us to enter a world that does not depend on us alone, but a world that opens itself to God and has no limitations of this world. We often keep our you know, mind and our, our whole life embedded in this world but as people of faith, we're invited to uplift our spirits, our minds, into God's world, the sacred, the holy, and allow God to do great things for us. Things will not turn out the way we want them to happen. A loved one dies. We don't get that job we wanted, or we have other concerns of life. But in a sense, in those difficult moments, we learn more about ourselves, we sense that God was there to care for us and that we persevere and move forward with hope-filled hearts that God is always there, guiding us always. Life can be very challenging. Life can be very disappointing. But somehow we keep moving with God in our hearts, helping others in life, seeing God working in our life, and finding our way to joy as best we can, fulfill life and peace. So there are two key elements I want you to take home with you today from this gospel. First of all, the virtue of hope is value in our life, never to become so disillusioned by the world, become hopeless. That's not the right pathway to go down. If you feel that way, pray and if it becomes very difficult, talk to loved ones, see us priests here in the parish to rejuvenate that hope in your life. And secondly, I, I, I really appreciate in this gospel how the woman was the key advocate for her, her child. And how in a sense we too must be advocates for others in life. First of all, prayer. Pray for others, bring that person to God in prayer but also not being afraid of action. We see someone needs our help, our assistance to really step in and help that person find the pathway for healing for new life. Uh, I think when someone has to go uh, to physician, to doctor's appointments or is on a, uh, medical care, well, to embrace that person, love that person through those moments. Uh, all a myriad of scenarios we can name where we can be advocates for someone who needs that support, that friendship, that love. And sometimes we don't have to look beyond our family. You know, who in our family circle needs that extra support and love, guidance, so that he or she can experience new life. 
And uh, I, I invite you to think about that and pray about that and to assist anybody, especially during these challenging times. People can get, get down the dumps, get sidetracked, a little depression, a little gloominess in their life. How can you brighten that person, be an advocate for that person's wholeness and wellness, and allow that person to resume his or her you know, journey of life in a beautiful spirit? So my friends, may God bless you this day. This gospel is, is challenging, but it's very instructive of how we approach Jesus with a hope-filled heart to be embracing God's love in our life, healing, new life, new direction, and trust in the power of God in our spirit. If we keep our feet and our whole being ground in this world, we don't see the beauty of God in our life and the potential there for us. So may God help us this day to seek that uh, journey. And at this Eucharistic table this morning, receive the nourishment that God desires for us to journey with him in fullness of life, spirit, and love. God bless you, my friends, today. May you find peace with God in your heart and be willing to share that with others and help others in their journey of life. God bless you. May you find peace. Let's now profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made consubstantial with the Father, from all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and life of the world to come. Amen. Let's now present our prayers to our loving God. For the church, may the grace and mercy of the Holy Spirit continue to strengthen her in faith and unity, we pray to the Lord. For leaders of nations throughout the world, may God grant them a spirit of reconciliation and collaboration, we pray to the Lord. For our faith community, May the Lord help us in using our gifts for his glory, we pray to the Lord. For those who are suffering from the effects of the pandemic, especially those in nursing homes and assisted living facilities, may God's Holy Spirit bring them comfort and healing, we pray to the Lord. For all those who are serving in the military and are away from home, and all who are working on the front lines of the pandemic, may God protect them and bring them home to their loved ones, we pray to the Lord. For those who are sick, those experience severe weather patterns, and those who feel alone, may they experience the comfort of our loving God, we pray to the Lord. For our beloved dead, especially Norma Godot, Sister Mary Shea, Margaret Powers, Donald Reardon Sr., Donald Reardon III, Douglas Treadwell, Catherine Pritchard, and Richard Fecteau, may they experience the mercy of God and rest in his eternal peace, we pray to the Lord. For the prayers and concerns we silently call to mind, we pray to the Lord. Almighty God, hear our prayers just spoken. Those many prayers we bring with us to this, today's Eucharist uh, in our hearts. 
Bless them, support us in our journey of life. Help us to approach you always with great hope in our spirits. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and your spiritual God, the Almighty Father, may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive our oblations, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given may merit to receive your very self through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, for your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things. You sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for your holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with all the angels and saints, we declare your glory as one voice we acclaim together. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and in his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
in a similar way when supper was into the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which we put out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me The Mystery of Faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. You have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, the clergy, religious, and all your faith-filled people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may we co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we are always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and, and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins when the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace.
My friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Prayer for Spiritual Communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. I'd like to invite you to join us this Wednesday night, August 19th at 7 p.m. to discuss the book Prayerfulness by Robert Wicks. I'm hoping that we will have a really good discussion on the book and kind of elevate our own personal spiritualities. Hope to see you on Zoom. The Zoom code will be on the bottom of the screen. Thank you. Hello everyone, good to see you all. I'm taping this little moment here with you in my office at the Pastoral Center. And I have some exciting news to share with you. Uh, in recent days, we had installed at Sacred Hearts Church live streaming capabilities. And it's a wonderful technology uh, uh, gift to us to uh, be able to live stream masses and celebrations throughout our, our church year. So we're going to begin soon uh, with live streaming our uh, weekend mass schedule from Sacred Hearts Church. What that means is that you can go on our website and click on a certain uh, button there and watch a live stream mass from Sacred Hearts Church. Our regular mass schedule, 4 o'clock on Saturday, 7.30, 9, 11.30 masses on Sunday. Uh, we do not have live streaming capabilities at St. Patrick's right now, but we can offer you four live stream masses for you to uh, celebrate with us and see various priests and uh, hear beautiful music, be part of our, our parish family really live. But you also will have the opportunity to go on to our website anytime after Saturday evening to, to watch the taped 4 o'clock mass. So there'll be another button for that for you to see later on Saturday night or any day Sunday. Perhaps you've visited the uh, website in recent weeks and months. Uh, it contains a lot of information about parish life. And just try it right now and see how well you do to get right on the website and see the actual locations for the live stream mass and the taped mass that will be you know, updated each week. Now, if you have trouble, um, accessing our website and uh, difficulty uh, finding our mass live streamed, 
please call the office. We'll be happy to assist you and see what we can do to help you to find us, uh, find our website, and to continue watching uh, uh, Mass each weekend from Sacred Hearts Parish. Weekend. So there's many opportunities for us to stay uh, close to you and, and be uh, feel connected with you throughout the coming weeks and months. So know that I'm praying for you always. It's great to uh, you know, receive notes from you, uh, to a phone call now and then, and of course your wonderful financial support that help, has helped the parish immensely to maintain our budget and to see you know, really a, a positive spirit in the parish. So God bless you, stay well, and hope to see you soon. Let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit to also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who live and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Have a great day, everyone. Sister Margaret Nyanjirechi, a sister of Our Lady of Good Counsel from Uganda Mbarara Archdiocese. The Congregation of Our Lady of Good Counsel, Sisters, is a diocesan African Women Religious Institute. It was started in 1937 in Mbarara Diocese by the Canadian Sisters of Our Lady of Good Counsel. In 1957, the congregation became independent diocese and indigenous congregation. Today, the total number of professed sisters, we are 338. And about 110 sisters are aged and retired. The mission of our congregation is evangelization through integral education and formation for the role of society. The sisters have founded schools, vocational training centers, and health centers. The congregation supports many youth, those in schools and out of school. The sisters teach and help those with special needs, like the blind, disabled, lame, deaf, especially the victims of HIV AIDS. Hi, I'm Maureen Heil from the Propagation of the Faith Office here in the Archdiocese of Boston. And I wanted to just take a few moments to share a little bit of my experience when I visited Sister Margaret and the Sisters of Our Lady of Good Counsel in Mbarara, Uganda a few years ago. The sisters were so excited. I arrived just before dusk, which is really important in Uganda. You don't drive at night there. There's, there's no street lights. The road conditions are pretty bad and people are walking constantly. So it's a danger to the pedestrians, but it's a danger to the drivers and the, their passengers as well. So they were very happy that I, I had arrived before dusk and they had flowers hanging from the trees to decorate the driveway to welcome me. They danced and they sang. Their hospitality was overwhelming. You would have thought that I was a long lost member of their congregation returned home. When you go to the missions, you'll find that the people are incredibly generous and they will share their last of anything with you just to show you their hospitality. 
Now, while I was with the sisters and I stayed with them for a few days, they took me to a few of the different sites that they work at that donations from appeals like this helped to support in a very real way. One of them is a school and a vocational training center for um, young women and young men, teenagers really, uh, who have mental and physical challenges in their life. Now, in a place like Uganda, when you're born with a physical or a mental challenge, quite often um, you're, you're put aside in the family. Uh, you're not given the attention and the care. And that's really due to a kind of a lack of education in the rural areas that, that many adults have lived with. Uh, they don't understand that there are still talents in you that, that God can bring forward. And so the sisters go out into the rural areas and they find these young people and they bring them to the school. They clothe them, they feed them, they educate them, and they help them to understand how much God loves them. On this particular day that I visited the school, the girls and boys were making school uniforms. So they were actually sitting at, at looms and doing this intricate work that I know my fingers could not have gotten around, but the sisters had trained them and they were knitting sweaters that would be school uniforms for the local schools. In Uganda, every student wears a school uniform, whether they're in a private school or a public school. And actually it's one of the things that will keep a child out of school is if their parents cannot afford the uniform or the textbooks or the school fees. Public school is not free in Uganda. And so the sisters then go and sell these uniforms to local people and that helps to supply the needs of these young people. And so with your donations today, you would help those sisters who are literally taking these children in and saving their lives. The congregation may help many other needy people that flock the doors of convents for help. The congregation built a health center to treat these people in the poor communities. We need to build an operating room in order to get doctors help in our health center for surgery. This only needs a lot of money. This demand alone stretches the financial ability of the congregation. The challenges in the congregation. There is high level of poverty, lack of money to build the surgery room in our health center, building a home for the aged and sick sisters, high rate of controllable and curable diseases, HIV AIDS is a scourge and have claimed lives of many parents leaving behind many widows, widowers, orphans, and even babies. The congregation supports them. Another place that we visited was the novitiate. And I was amazed at how many young women were there. Um, and, and again, all there to greet me on the front steps, singing and dancing like I was a local hero. And they sat down to, to listen to me, but really I had questions for them. I wanted to ask them why the Sisters of Our Lady of Good Counsel? There are so many local diocesan orders of sisters spread across Uganda. They could have had their choice of many. Um, and later, actually, the superior said to me, I was a little nervous when you asked them that question. I didn't know what they'd say. Well, their answers were brilliant. One girl said to me, I was a sickly girl when I was little. And the nurses in the hospital were from the Sisters of Our Lady of Good Counsel. And I thought, I want to be like them. I, I want to heal people. And another girl said, the sisters were my teachers in school. And I thought, if I can help educate girls, because a lot of girls don't get an education in the missions. They're, they're married off very, very young. 
and start their own families at even 12 and 13. And this young girl said, if I can be one of those sisters and save some young girls and educate them, then that's what God means me to be. But the, the most moving of all of them was one girl who was a little too shy to speak up and raise her hand. As I was leaving, she pulled me aside and she said, I want to be a sister of Our Lady of Good Counsel because they saved my life. And I looked to her to say, they saved your life? What, what do you mean? And she said, I didn't know about God. I didn't know how much God loved me. And now all I want to do is tell everyone that God loves them too. And that's why I want to be a sister of Our Lady of Good Counsel. And I thought, huh, my goodness, what else could there be? What other reason could there be to join these wonderful, warm, hospitable sisters, their nurses, their teachers, their administrators in their archdiocese? They're so hardworking and they need your help. We need your prayers. We are asking for your prayers that we may get energy, we may get finance to do all this work that is in front of us. We are asking for your financial support. Whatever you have, let it be small, let it be a dollar, let it be two, five. That will help one victim. How about doing vocations to mission work? What do I mean by vocations to mission work? You can do vocations in your parishes by helping in the parish. You can do it in the diocese. You can stretch yourselves beyond your diocese and parish. Go to other states, go to other countries. Come to Uganda and see for yourselves what I'm talking about. On behalf of our congregation and the Superior General, I thank you in advance. May God bless you all. If you are writing a check, write it in the name of the parish and on memo put for missions. Parish, the parish priest will take the check to the mission office. And if you want to know more from our congregation, I've witnessed firsthand the work that they do, saving lives, teaching, and sharing God's love. So today I'd ask you to be as generous as you possibly can for the Sisters of Our Lady of Good Counsel from Emberara, Uganda. You'll never regret a minute of it. Thank you very much. May God bless you and reward you. Oh,